Well, that was great, wasn't it? Sorry about the technical problem at the beginning. Um, did anybody see themselves there? Was anybody there for that event? I was, and it was great. It really was great. Um, yeah, I was actually there, but I was sitting up at the back somewhere, so I was kind of like that big. I never saw myself. Anyway, um, so holy, holy, holy. That's the God that we're worshipping this morning. It is lovely to see you all here on Zoom again this morning with some visitors, and that's really great as well. You're very welcome um, with us. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed singing along with that song. I'm really hoping that you've all got um, your handout, uh, which we, we sent you um, and I think was on Facebook. I'm not 100% certain if we put it on Facebook, this page at uh, this time, but there's nothing there that you won't be able to find somewhere else anyway. So let's join in prayer together. So, Sustaining like and encouraging God, we thank you for being always by our side. Encourage us to turn to you every day and to seek your guidance for our lives. Slow us when we try to rush ahead. Prompt us when we delay and hesitate. Steady us when we stumble. Although we cannot always understand this world, remind us that you delight in each one of us and will strengthen and support us to grow in faith and service. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. And although we're going to leave you all on mute, God will hear our voices and our hearts in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm hoping that um, Michaela and Alex are near the screen and also Jamie and Lydia, because I want to just talk for a moment about the craft activity that we did last week. Um, do you remember I sent you, um, the youngsters, um, a little sort of outline thing that you could colour and then fold and stick together and make a prayer cube. Now, Sharon, I understand, um, could you just unmute yourself, Sharon, please? Yeah. Um, so under, apparently Sharon had difficulty in printing this off. So they've done their own version of this. So perhaps you could just show, I you show what, what you've done. We did a thankful jar. Okay, and what, what have you done with that? It's a jar that you have... We put, oh bits of paper in for all the things that we were thankful for. Okay, so would you like to give us an example of one thing that you've been grateful for this week? For family, for health family. today. Yeah. Um, Mickey and Alex, uh, Mickey I can see you just underneath, could you unmute yourself? Brilliant, thank you. Um, we did the prayer box. Okay, just hold it really close to the screen. Oh, okay, can you turn it round so we can see? So there's a sorry there, okay, and a thanks and a praise. Yes, that was the one we had at the beginning. And have you been using that this week, Mickey? Yes. Brilliant. What did you do, like in your prayer time in the morning or the evening, or what did you do? We only do it um, before I go to bed, about Brilliant. nine o'clock. At nine o'clock? That's very late. My goodness, that's way past my bedtime. But you used it, did you? That's good. Well done. Thank you, Mickey, for sharing uh, that with us. So great idea. If anybody still wants the uh, template for that, email me and I'll email it to you. That's great. Thank you very much, Mickey, for sharing that with us. Now, Major David. Good morning. Greetings and felicitations. I just wanted to send out a few felicitations as is important for those on the back sofa and reclining chairs to stay awake. 
a very short quiz for anyone young at heart. And I just wondered if we could have to look at some card badges. Just find a space on your handout to write the numbers one to five, because we've just got five things coming up. Which car has this badge? So if you saw this car come along with this badge, what car would you be looking at? If you know the answer, just write it down by number one. And the next, here we go. What about this one then? Obviously the niche has been plotted out, but if you saw this car and badge coming along, what would it be? Jot it down. And we're coming to number three. Here's this third one. What about this monster here? What do you reckon that would be? If you know the answer, just jot it down. Well, we're well over halfway and here's number four. You might have to mortgage the, the hall for this one. Shut down number four if you know it. And finally we hit the very last one, number five. There's a real icon on it. Which car has this badge? If you reckon you know that one, jot it down. There you are, five questions, five cars, five badges. And the next slide starts us off. It simply says time for the answers. So here we go with the answer to number one. Clearly it was an Audi and you can see it there. Just wave your paper if you knew it. I just want to see if you just had it. Oh yes, a couple of wave of paper, right. Well done. Now what about number two now with the initials hidden about? If we go to the next one, Steve. Number two, BMW. I've seen, they've never been in one of those. Uh, anyone know that? Just wave your papers. All right, we've got some of the posh set with us today then. Now, <laughs> we're going for the cheap lot now. Number three, here's the next one. Did you recognize that? That was a Toyota and I just found a Corolla just to let you know. Who knew that one? Oh, a few more, yes, a few have got this one. Okay. Now to la creme de la creme, number four. Did you get this one? Now then, Rolls Royce. When we were stationed at Hanwell in West London, there was um, a, a dealership of uh, Rolls Royce, second hand ones, of course. There were no prices on the car because if you had to ask, then you couldn't afford it. We wouldn't have minded one of them, but the army gave us the good old Red Ford, or if you remember the, the CJMs. Okay, on we go to the last one. Hyundai. Um, I wonder if you got that one. Just a wave of paper if you got that. Now then, are you ready? Wave your sheet if you got all five. Did you get all five? Oh, it's a few there, look. Well, Major Marin, you'll be pleased to know that our congregation is definitely above average. That's not bad. But now comes the real question. Why do cars have badges on the front? Now, I wonder if you've had any of these. Um, my brother's got a Jeep, certainly not got the Bentley or anything. Right. Well, they have, a, they have the emblem on the front because it tells people what the car is. And it's like a hidden advert to make them persuade people to come and buy one. So there you can see the clown's car if you want it. And the emblem just reminds people what they want to go and buy one. So I want you to ask as we come to our YP, now which of these badges says that we are a Christian? Can you see any badge there that you've got or any badge you like? Just simply give a wave 
if you've had one or got one or fancy one. You clearly see John 3.16 quite a lot, especially if you watch Ski Sunday. That badge is always around and the fish badge is quite popular. But the question is, which of these badges says that we are a Christian? Let's find the answer. Well, the real answer is, of course, none of them. You see, a badge is external. We put it on to show things. But a Christian is someone with Christ in. And if you crossed out the A of Christian, you get Christ in. And that's what a Christian is, someone with Christ in. So our last slide relates us to our story today. So how did people know that Paul and Silas were Christians? Of course, it was by what they said and what they did. The power of Christ within them empowered them to speak out and tell others about Christ and heal the sick. This week then our challenge is to let the power of Christ within us leak out and let others know that we have Christ within. God bless. Brilliant. Yeah. Good morning. It's great to see you all today. We will all know that we have a number of people who are really very poorly. Please continue to pray for Steph, Margaret, James and Keith in particular. You all know Olivia, who is one of our lovely junior soldiers. We've received news this morning that her mum has to undergo surgery within the next few days. Please hold Olivia and all her family in your prayers. We were very encouraged last week at the kind and prayerful response to our request for prayers for those who are suffering with mental health issues. Thank you for this. Please keep on praying. We send our love to all those who are feeling poorly just at the moment. Please keep on praying for each other, in particular the people we've mentioned. You'll be glad to know that our charity shop in Lansing is due to open on Tuesday the 8th of September, albeit with reduced opening hours. Please pray for our shop employees and volunteers as they serve our mission. If there's anyone who feels they might be able to help with this, please let Marion know. Thank you for your continued financial giving to the core. In a few moments, we are going to listen to the chorus Faithful God, which I recorded during this week. It's a simple chorus with a powerful message. God is always faithful to us, and in our darkest times, he will be our deliverer and our peace. As the music plays, take a moment to reflect on the words. Faithful God, faithful God. All sufficient one, I worship you. Shalom, my peace, my strong deliverer. I lift you up, faithful God.
shall we share a prayer together? Lord, you are a faithful God. We bring before you those in our core who are far from well at this time. In particular, we think of Steph, Margaret, James and Keith. We pray for Olivia and the family as her mum undergoes surgery this week. We also think of those in our core who are struggling with their mental health and pray that you will be a comfort to them. We think of our charity shop employees and volunteers as they prepare to reopen our charity shop. We pray for a successful reopening, that you will protect our staff while they are working and that your spirit will be with them within the shop. Amen. Amen. Hi. My name's Catherine, although I prefer to be called Kat. I live in Soldier Hill at Worthing and have been happily married to my husband Jonathan for the last three years. Today, I want to share some of the things that I feel are most important in my life. Friends and family. It might sound like a cliche, but friends and family are very important to me. I'm lucky that I have three people I can call my close friends. One is obviously my husband Jonathan, and the other two are Nikki and Susie. I used to work with Nikki and Susie, and while I don't work with them anymore, we've still been able to chat whenever we can, meet up, and they're just more like my sisters than my friends. Susie shares my love of musicals and Harry Potter, and we'll often do quizzes together, and then generally wake up the household when we have our chats afterwards. Nikki, we can spend hours sat in Costa chatting away and we usually try and aim to drink all of the drinks on the menu. Not actually achieved that one yet though. Family. My family used to consist of my mum, my stepdad and my half brother Daniel. Daniel is 13 years younger than me. So imagine teenager versus toddler. Didn't always work out so well. But last year, my biological father made contact and I have since learned that I have another half-brother, five step-brothers and sisters and four nieces and nephews. Now, if you add that into Jonathan's side of the family, where he alone has nine brothers and sisters, that makes for one very big family. Now, I'm not one that likes huge gatherings, so I don't plan on getting them together any time soon but I do love spending time with them all separately. Books. I am an avid reader and could easily spend the whole day reading. When I go on holiday, I have to pack at least three or four books because I would have finished them all by the time we come home. My favourite authors are J.K. Rowling, Chris Carter and Jodie Pickle. As mentioned, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and will take any opportunity I have to test out my knowledge doing quizzes. I've yet to come first in any of these quizzes, but I have come a close second and third recently, so let's watch out for that first place. As mentioned, my other favourite author is Jodie Pickle, and she writes some challenging novels in some controversial subjects like abortion and racism, and they really tackle the issue at heart. My favourite book of hers is My Sister's Keeper, which is about a young 13 year old who fights her family for independence when she is meant to give her elder sister her kidney. And then there's the Bible. You can't really have books without mentioning the Bible. The thing that I love most about the Bible is no matter how many times you read the same passage, there's always something to learn. And I genuinely enjoy reading Christian theology books, which might sound a little bit nerdy, but I enjoy finding out more about God and deepening my relationship with him. I have a whole bookshelf full of these books and would easily add to my collection if I had the room and Jonathan let me keep buying them every time I see them. And then there's music. Music has been a massive part of my life. Growing up, 
I learned to play the cornet and quickly joined the sing company and Mikey band. And then I learned to play piano. And then I went on to a company for the sing company and even lead worship with the worship group. I am in most of the musical sections here at the core and I have the privilege of being in the leadership team for both the sing company and the songsters. One of the main privileges for me is being able to teach new music to the group and see how that piece of music can impact on the group and then on the congregation when we sing it out. I often use music as a way to relax when I'm feeling stressed. If I'm having a bad day, then I'll put on some music, maybe a song that's been going around my head forever, or I'll just sit at the piano and play whatever comes to me. But I'm also a big musicals fan. I'll go and see shows whenever I can. And I even managed to convince Jonathan to loosely place our wedding on the theme Wicked. Mainly because I love the colour green and I managed to convince him to have an emerald and black theme. I was only given five minutes to share part of me with you. So I'm going to leave you with one of the Bible passages that's really spoken to me throughout my candidates process so far. And that's Philippians 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. The Bible reading this morning is taken from Acts 18, verses 1 to 11 and 18 to 28. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinthia. There he met a Jew named Aquila a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with him, with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the um, synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus Justus, a worshipper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who had heard Paul believed and were baptised. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent, for I am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinthia for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. I'm Aquila, a Jew from Pontus by the Black Sea. I'm a tent maker by trade. My wife Priscilla helps me and we've built up a good business. We lived in Rome until the Emperor Claudius banned all Jews from the city. So we moved to Corinth, and it was there that we met Paul. I'm Priscilla. I remember first meeting Paul, just between you and me. I think he was a bit nervous about coming to Corinth, because it was well known for immorality and wickedness. When we found out he was our tent maker too, we invited him to work with us. In fact, he stayed at our house. It worked out well, because he taught us more about Jesus. Mind you, most Jews in Corinth didn't want to hear what Paul had to say, but Paul told them straight that he'd go and tell the Gentiles instead. Many of them became Christians. We went with Paul to Ephesus and stayed there whilst we, he went off to Jerusalem. Then we met Apollos, an Egyptian Jew. Everyone thought he was a brilliant speaker, but he didn't know that Jesus was the saviour who died so we'd be forgiven and he'd never heard about the Holy Spirit. So he invited him into our home and told him what Paul had said. 
After that, his preaching was even better, for now he knew the whole story. There is a green hill far away Outside a city wall Where the dear Lord was crucified He died to save us all No, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there. to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven, saved by His precious blood. There was no other good enough to the price of sin He only could unlock the gates of heaven and let us in Lord Jesus Dearly you have loved And we must love you too And trust in your redeeming blood And learn to follow you Paul stayed on in Cor Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Sencrea because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail for Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and travelled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandra, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with great fervour and taught about Jesus accurately, though he only knew of the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home 
and explain to him the way of God more adequately. When Apollos wanted to go to Acacia, the brothers and sisters encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted his Jewish opponents in public debate proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. Some really good news to encourage you all on your journey. Um, this, actually, this isn't the good news, because what I'm going to tell you is that today is probably the last time that Keith and Evie will be joining with us. Um, there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, on September the 5th, they will be celebrating their golden wedding anniversary. Now that is really, really good news. And we offer you our, our huge congratulations. Neither of you looks anywhere near old enough to have been married for 50 years, but you tell me you have, so I, I believe you. Um, Keith and Evie are um, members of the Corps at Hastings Citadel. And when I was the CO there, they were really, really good friends to me, really good um, support to me and um, I know they support that you know the CO that's been there since and their new CO um, now and they're starting their own online ministry as from next week so Keith and Evie will be attending there rather than coming to share with us um, so we want to um, say you know it's been really great to have you with us and you are welcome anytime and I know you've got plans for when we're meeting in the hall again to come back and actually meet everybody in person that will be really great we look forward to that um the other piece of really good news as if celebrating your golden wedding anniversary wasn't good enough um is it actually next week next sunday next sunday yeah yeah keith and evie are being recognized as adherents at the core in Hastings and that is brilliant news it's something they've been talking about for a long time and um, we offer you our really really warm wishes um, both for your wedding anniversary and really for this next step in your journey of faith so please give our love won't you to everybody at Hastings Citadel I've got lots of friends there still please give them our love and um, we wish you all the very best for next Sunday for the anniversary and all the rest of it thank you so today we're taking another dip into the book of Acts. Chapter 18, which is the chapter Keith and Evie read from, actually covers a period of several years. It's sometimes difficult for us today because we're used to easy car and plane journeys to realise just how long it took Paul to get around. Even when he went by ship, he was dependent on the wind to sail the boat or man and oar power. There were no outboard motors then, of course. And the Mediterranean Sea was not always gentle and peaceful, far from it. Priscilla and Aquila were refugees. So it is perhaps even more surprising that they opened their homes so readily. And we learn from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians that Priscilla and Aquila started a church there in their own home. They were obviously very kind hearted. And when they met with Apollos, who until then hadn't even known the whole story of Jesus, they didn't criticise or patronise. They simply told him the whole thing. It was important for Apollos to know the whole truth. It's important for us all to know the full truth, to know who Jesus is and what he did for each one of us on the cross. Only then will we be able to tell others the good news with confidence. Do any of you remember the Peanuts cartoons? I think they used to be in the Daily Mail or something. Um, there was one where Lucy is sitting in a roadside store on which is a sign mm. saying psychiatric help five cents and when Charlie Brown goes for analysis Lucy tells him the trouble with you Charlie Brown is that you are you. She makes a diagnosis but she doesn't offer any help at all. Contrast that 
with what happens in Acts chapter 18. These two leather workers became friends of Paul at Corinth. They helped and encouraged him, much like Keith and Evie did when I was the CEO at Hastings. They helped and encouraged him after his bad experience at Athens. They also had a powerful ministry of their own. See what they did to help Apollos. They recognised a problem, we read that in verse 26, and despite Apollos' eloquence, they saw that he was missing something. He had only half the story, we see in verse 25. They didn't despise him or look down on him. They felt for him, they loved him, and they acted. Mm -hmm. They gave him help and hospitality. They invited him into their home rather than criticise him publicly. And there he was gently and privately led to the deeper truth. We sometimes need to take the initiative, don't we? The whole church encouraged Apollos. As soon as he knew the full story, he was able to use his gifts even more effectively, which gave him even more assurance and confidence. He became a great leader in his own right. We see that when we read the first letter to the Corinthians, um, chapter 1 and verse 12. You might want to look that up a bit later on. Priscilla and Aquila had to be ready and prepared to let their prodigy go and let him fly. And so do we need to allow our young people to move on and into their own ministry and take on responsibility. And that's it for today. Very simple message. It's just that. Let's encourage each other. Let's help each other. Let's not criticise each other when we see that people are perhaps not doing things quite right. Let's just encourage, shall we? Let's take time to reflect on who might need us today to make a difference to them and their lives. And let's pray about that. Lord, please help us to respond to your prompting. You know we are often hesitant to speak about you. We hesitate to share your love because we think we may offend or in case we appear foolish. Help us, Lord, to realise that as you urge us to speak. So you will give us the words and help us to overcome our diffidence. Please give us such a measure of your love that we may help and encourage those who look to us for help. There are so many who need to hear about your love and the new life you give. Please help us to do what we can where we are, to be ready with a helping hand, an encouraging word, and to do only that which will be honouring to your name and your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have a, a final song ready for you, and um, this is a, a YouTube clip. Um, this is actually from a, a Songs of Praise programme. Um, and the song is a song that we're becoming more and more familiar with in army circles. Lord, for the years, your word has led and guided. Um, did we put the words of this on the handout? No, we didn't, but the words come up on the screen. So you'll be able to join in with singing.
And so our kind of sending out prayer, out to do what we've just been thinking about. Um, and on your handout, you'll see um, on the second page, about halfway down, there's a little couplet there. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And you're invited to join in that response in the name of Christ. Amen. So here we go. Go now and continue to offer prayers and thanksgiving for everyone. Be shrewd in dealing with the world around you, but do not be seduced into serving wealth. Weep for those who suffer and share faith and truth with all. And may God welcome you with love. May Christ Jesus give you knowledge of the truth and may the Holy Spirit lead you into all goodness and godliness and dignity. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Well, thank you all for being with us this morning. Big thank you to those who've done things behind the scenes. We really appreciate your help with that. And um, the things that we haven't been able to actually show you this morning, I will add them into the edited version of the meeting, which will go on Facebook. So it's Coffee Fellowship time. I hope you're all going to stay around and um, have a chat with everybody. And I'm going to get my coffee now. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. <laughs>